हैव यू और एनी ऑफ योर फैमिली मेम्बर हैज बिन एडवाइज फॉर अ थाइरॉयड सर्जरी डू यू नो वॉट इज अ थाइरॉयड सर्जरी एंड वॉट आर द टाइप्स वॉट आर द कॉमन क्वेश्चन विच कम्स इन अ पीपल्स माइंड इफ यू डोंट नो देन स्टे ट्यून विथ मी बिकॉज वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस दैट इन आवर टूडेज टॉपिक नमस्ते माई नेम इज डॉक्टर तानवी मयूर पटेल आई एम एन एंडोक्रेनोलॉजिस्ट हॉर्मोन स्पेशलिस्ट डॉक्टर फ्रॉम मुंबई इंडिया नाउ बिफोर आई बिगिन दिस वीडियो वन इम्पॉर्टेंट इन्फॉर्मेशन इफ यू वॉन्ट टू वॉच दिस वीडियो इन हिंदी लैंग्वेज देन ऑन द आई बटन एंड इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स देर इज अ लिंक इफ यू क्लिक ऑन दैट लिंक देन दिस वीडियो विल बी प्लेड इन हिंदी लैंग्वेज फॉर यू अगर आप इस वीडियो को हिंदी भाषा में देखना चाहते हैं तो ऊपर आई बटन पे और नीचे डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स में एक लिंक है अगर आप उस लिंक पे क्लिक करेंगे तो इस वीडियो को आप हिंदी भाषा में पाएंगे सो थाइरॉयड सर्जरी इज आवर टूडेज टॉपिक बाई द वे दिस एंटायर सीरीज ऑफ द थाइरॉयड टॉपिक इज स्प्लिट इन टू मेनी पार्ट सो दैट यू कैन गेट अ कंप्लीट इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट इट नाउ बिफोर वी टॉक अबाउट द थाइरॉयड सर्जरी it is very important for you to understand the normal anatomy of the thyroid gland by the way in a separate video i have talked in detail about the anatomy but in today's topic i am just going to brush up a little bit of the anatomy which is of importance in concern with the thyroid surgery okay so thyroid gland is located in front of our neck we have only one thyroid gland and this is a usually a butterfly or h shaped gland this gland has a two lobes or a two parts the right lobe and a left lobe and both these lobes are connected with each other by a horizontal tissue called as an isthmus okay now behind the thyroid gland we have a small parathyroid glands they are usually four in number and these parathyroid gland play a very important role in a balancing of a calcium in our body very close to the thyroid gland lies a very important nerve called as a laryngeal nerve there are some parts of this laryngeal nerve which is very closely associated and during surgery if at all their damage happens to these nerves can cause a damage in our voice production also our thyroid gland since it is present in our neck area it is also very closely associated with our wind pipe that is a trachea and a food pipe that is a esophagus so these are very important anatomical structure pertaining to the thyroid surgery now let's see what is a thyroid surgery See thyroid surgery is a very commonly performed surgery and this surgery is called as a thyroidectomy thyroidectomy means when we cut and remove either a total or a small part of a thyroid gland that surgery is called as a thyroidectomy how much we are going to remove and how much we are going to keep your thyroid gland intact based on that the thyroid surgeries are of four types the very first variety is called as a total thyroidectomy as the name suggests total means we are going to remove your entire thyroid gland your right lobe left lobe and the gland which is attached to the windpipe that is a trachea so when we remove entire these three structures we call it as a total thyroidectomy total thyroidectomy is usually performed when you have a thyroid cancer sometimes if your thyroid gland is enlarged which we call it as a goiter or a multinodular goiter in those situations also we can do a total thyroidectomy second type of surgery is called as a sub total thyroidectomy now what happens here we are not going to remove entire thyroid gland but the gland which is attached to the windpipe or a trachea we are going to keep that intact and the rest of the other structures of the gland is removed so that is a sub total thyroidectomy usually subtotal thyroidectomy is not done routinely in thyroid cancer but yes if you have a goiter then 
a subtotal thyroidectomy can be advised. And many a times in a subtotal thyroidectomy, the chances of damage to the recurrent laryngeal nerve is a very, very less. Third variety of a thyroid surgery is called as a hemithyroidectomy. Now word hemi means half. So we are going to remove half of your thyroid gland, either the right side or the left side depending on which side of your thyroid gland has an issue. So whichever lobe has an issue, we are going to cut and remove only that part of the thyroid gland. The other part which is not damaged is going to remain intact. Now there are many advantages of a hemithyroidectomy. The first advantage is that because we are not removing your entire thyroid gland, some amount of a thyroid gland is still present in your body. And this balance of the thyroid gland will still function after the surgery. And this will cover up for the requirement of the thyroid hormones. So because of that, the chances of a hypothyroidism, which is a very common complication after the surgery is the less. So either you will not have a hypothyroidism at all or if at all you have, it will be on a very mild to moderate level. And also your need and a requirement of the thyroid hormone is also very less or it can be even minimum. Second advantage is that because half thyroid gland is intact, so two of your parathyroid glands are also intact. So because of that, even the calcium imbalance chances are very, very less. And the third advantage is that uh, the damage to the recurrent laryngeal nerve is also very less and due to that the change in the voice also happens to a lesser extent. So these three are the major advantages of a hemithyroidectomy. However, hemithyroidectomy is done mainly under two conditions. In the first condition, when we know that the gland enlargement that is a goiter which is a non-cancerous is only limiting to one area in that case situation and in the second condition when we are in the stage of a confusion or in the stage of a suspicion that what kind of a enlargement of your thyroid gland is okay see understand one thing before any doctor suggests you to undergo a thyroidectomy surgery, we do lot of testing prior to that. Okay, And in that very important testing is done called as a FNAC that is fine needle aspiration cytology. During this procedure, we are going to insert a syringe and a needle into your lump and we are going to extract a fluid out of the lump. And this fluid is then examined under the microscope to find out whether the lump is a cancer or it is not a cancer. If it turns out to be a cancer, of course, a total thyroidectomy will be advised. But suppose that it is a not a cancer, then in that case, we try to maintain a some amount of a thyroid tissue in your body. But sometimes if after the FNSC results, we feel that the results are not very accurate and if we have a doubt or a suspicion whether your uh, a tumor was a cancer or not a cancer, in this suspicious type of a situation, we do hemithyroidectomy. So advantage of uh, hemithyroidectomy in such cases is that at least we have half of your gland intact which can function for rest of your life. Many times what happens when we do a hemithyroidectomy surgery in the operation theater itself we do take an advantage of the cytologist and a pathologist doctor to find out what type of a cancer is that. If there is a cancer we can do the rest of the surgery later that we call it as a completion thyroidectomy which is actually a fourth type of the surgery. Usually completion uh, thyroidectomy is performed within two to three weeks. 
okay now why is that so because after undergoing a one surgery there is a high chances that your uh, the neck area undergoes into a state of a healing and a fibrosis might happen which can make a second stage of the surgery difficult that's the reason why in a very short period of time a, a completion thyroidectomy is advised sometimes if the setup is a bigger setup and we have a immediate result of the uh, uh, of the cytological results in that case the patient can be taken to the operation theater in a very short period of time and can be done a second part of the surgery and that is a subtotal thyroidectomy so these are the four types of the thyroid surgery which we do based on the issue what you have for your thyroid gland now let's talk about some questions which come in a patient's mind when we advise them for the surgery very first question doctor is the surgery important and necessary see it depends on your medical case if it is a cancerous then yes it is very important because it's always over life over a limb okay and if it is a goiter then in that case again it depends on what kind of a symptoms you are having so surgery is advised only when it is absolute necessary in your case so always follow your treating doctor's advice second question is that is this surgery very routinely and commonly done answer is yes if you have any of the indications for the surgery it is a very commonly routinely done procedure another question is that is this surgery a major surgery answer is yes the surgery is considered one of the major surgery fourth question is that where this surgery will be performed of course it will be performed in the hospital okay another question do i need to get admitted or can it be done as a day care procedure see understand because it is a major surgery we usually advise a patient to hospitalization maybe for a period of 2 to 3 days again the duration of hospitalization can vary based on your overall health but in a very lesser chances we do this procedure as an outpatient procedure or a day care procedure however nowadays we do have a certain advancement endoscopic surgeries so at certain places yes it is done as a day care procedure but yes otherwise it is routinely advised for a hospitalization also very important thing is that after the surgery there are certain risk of the complication and if you are admitted in the hospital there is a very close observation which is kept on you so if there is any complications occur we can take a timely decision and save you so because of that the hospitalization is usually advised another question a patient ask is that what kind of anesthesia will be used see because it is a major surgery we use a general anesthesia and that is what a very routinely used anesthesia another question is that whether this surgery will be performed by a one single doctor or is it a team work see usually a thyroid surgery is actually a team work if you think that you have any kind of a issue in your thyroid gland the very first doctor which you are going to visit is most likely either an endocrinologist doctor or sometimes even a ent that is a ear nose and throat doctor and your doctor will do a further investigation and when we do the further investigation and if we think that the surgery is advised in that case the second level of the doctor comes into the picture and that is a endocrine surgeon or a general surgeon who are skilled in the thyroid surgery and after doing the uh, after doing the further investigations if we find out that your cancer is present in that case you might need to take a help of a oncologist doctor oncologist doctors are specialized in the cancer so either oncologist or oncological surgeon will also get involved so basically it is actually a team work and of course since you are going to undergo this surgery under general anesthesia you will have to take an opinion of a anesthetist doctor also and if you have other health problem like that of a heart problem a cardiac fitness will be needed 
and if you have a diabetes before the surgery the sugar has to be in a balanced range so that outcome of the surgery is better so yes i can say that it is actually a teamwork and not just a single doctor's involvement another question which patient has is that who all will be there in the operation theater see first of all in the operation theater will be a surgeon who is going to operate on you and the surgeon may have maybe one or two assistant doctors second will be the anesthetist doctor who is going to administer a general anesthesia to you and a third will be the nurse who will be helping and assisting in the entire procedure so these are the common people involved in the theater another question patient has is that will there be an incision and if yes what will be the size of the incision see there will be an incision taken and this incision is usually taken in front of your neck area and your surgeon is a very experienced and a skilled surgeon and usually they take a incision along with the skin crease so that in future the scar formation is less and the scar appearance is less how bigger will be the incision it depends on your individual case usually this incisions are anywhere between 1 and 1/2 to 3 inch but if you have a very large goiter in that case the incision might vary and if you have a very small goiter or if you are undergoing an endoscopic kind of a procedure again the incision size will be variable so it depends on individual to individual after the surgery will i be having a stitches that's again a very commonly asked question see after the surgery a gauge pressure kind of a dressing is applied the stitches nowadays are available for two types if you have a conventional stitches in that case you might have to remove the stitches after 5 to 7 days or your as per your doctor's advice and if we use any dissolvable stitches in that case we use a either skin glue or a paper tape so that can also help you in your stitching a very commonly asked question especially that of the women is that will it leave a scar mark okay now this is a very important question pertaining to cosmetic reason see because it is a major surgery and because we are going to take a incision over your neck area yes it is going to leave a scar mark however the scar appearance usually dissolves over a period of time see once you have immediately taken a surgery you might see that the scar is looking a little ugly but in the initial stages this scar tissue is usually very pinkish in appearance over a period of time your scar tissue do improve and it takes nearly around 1 to 1 and a half year for the actual scar to form and as the duration of the time passes you will experience that the scar tissue is becoming more smooth more flattened and it is usually covered up again since we have taken a incision over your skin crease there is a high chances that this will camouflage and the appearance will reduce however if you are more prone to a very hypertrophic scar what we call it as a keloid then in that case you might have a keloid kind of a scar so if you have a tendency of having a keloid please speak to your surgeon before so that he can take a timely appropriate uh, decisions and can help you out further right i hope after watching this video you got some good useful information by the way this is not just the end of our thyroid series topic i have made a many other videos on this series where i am going to talk about which are the patient who needs to undergo a surgery what are the possible complications how you can take care of your scar so that it does not leave a ugly scar what kind of a neck exercise you should be doing for a faster recovery and once you have undergone a surgery what kind of a care you need to take after the discharge so stay tuned for more information on this thyroid surgery series okay if you have any of your personal question pertaining to this thyroid related health then please leave your question in the comment box i try to answer them as early as i can and if you are new to my channel please don't forget to subscribe so that you will get more and more health related information and then there is a bell icon 
If you click there, as and when my new video will be published, you will get an instant notification. We will meet again with some new and useful information. Till then, take care of your health. Namaste.